Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to show you guys how to set up swimming for a side-scrolling platformer inside of Godot. So let's go ahead and play the current scene as it is. You'll see that we can fall off the platform, and when we fall into the water, we just keep falling as if there's no water there at all. So to make this work, we'll need to turn this water into some kind of trigger to let the player know that it is currently in water and then set up a separate movement state for the player so that it can play the swim animation and also move differently since it's in the water. So one way of doing this is going to be to set up a new physics layer that is specifically going to be for water or water-like substances and then make sure that that physics layer is applied to the water tiles. Then we can have the player look to see if it is currently colliding in some way with a tile that is on that layer and if so switch to the swimming state so for the tile map i'm using to build the level you can see we have a tile set attached to it uh, this is how it looks in Godot 4 you can come down here to physics layers so the default collision layer and collision mask that's being set for these top bridge tiles but let's create a new physics layer. So I'll click add element here. And then let's change the layer here to something else. You can use any of the 32 layers. I'll go ahead and just use layer two for now. And then we probably don't need a collision mask here because it's gonna be a one-way collision check. Only the player is gonna look to see if it's in the water. The water's not checking uh, to see if the player is in it. So there's no need for a collision mask here. So now if we take this physics layer, which you can see is physics layer one in the list and assign it to this tile, uh, we should be able to treat it as water. So I'm going to go to the tile set editor down here. Uh, this should be available if you have tile set open on your tile map. Then I'm going to click on the properties icon over here. So then I want to use the tile selection tool here. Uh, click on this tile uh, down here for physics layer zero. That's the normal collision. So we don't actually want anything there. So I'm going to make sure that's cleared. But for physics layer one, Let's go ahead and set this up. So add polygon tool and I'll click at the four corners like this and then back to the first one up here. So this will create a full collision shape here for this tile. So now any water tile should have this collision layer set for it. Let's hit play and try to jump into the water. You'll see that it doesn't actually do anything there because our player isn't looking to collision layer one because our player isn't looking to collision layer two in any way. So if I was to look into the scene for the player, let's click on player. I'll open up collision object 2D here, and then let's use mask layer two. Now, if we hit play and we jump into the water, you can see we're actually colliding with the water here now. So we don't want to have a normal collision. We just want to check if we're in the water. So let's add a new shape to our player, not for collision, but just for detection. I'll right click on the player root node, add a child, and let's look for area 2D, uh, area for detection, uh, an area for detection for physics. We can add a new collision shape in here. I'll just copy and paste the collision shape up here, actually. So basically, we're using the same shape, except this one is only going to be for detection. Now let's open up collision. And instead, we want to turn off the layer and we just want to mask layer two. I'll go ahead and rename this area water detection 2D. And for the game, basically, we're using layer two as the water layer. If we go up to project, project settings, and go down to layer names, let's see, uh, 2D physics, we could just put in water here for the name, hit close. And now if we hover over layer two here, uh, you can see that's the water layer. So that'll make it a little less confusing going forward. So next one I want to do is have the area 2D tell the player if there are overlapping water tiles that the area 2D's collision shape is inside of. So there are signals you can use on the area 2D, like body entered. But because there can be multiple tiles where the player is actually inside of at the same time, that would be a water tile. I only want it to tell the player when all of the tiles are outside of this area, not just one. So if there's one or more, then we want to make the player set itself up to be in a swimming state. And if there is zero, then we don't want it to be swimming. We want to return it to idle or run since it should be on land or in the air or something like that. So let's add a, another script to create a custom signal onto this area 2D. So I'm going to go to new script here and i'll call this uh water detection uh, and i'll call it 2d i guess 
I don't want this to be in characters though. Let's create a new folder. So I'll create a folder here. And I don't know, I could call it the physics folder because technically this is looking for uh, trigger collisions. So let's put that there, create it. And now we need to create some signals. So signal and I'll do no water, signal and water. So when we add these signals up here, you can see on the area 2D, if we go to node, that there are these new custom signals created here. And later we'll create a callback method on the player so that when these signals are emitted, the player will respond to that and we'll set that the player is in water or out of the water based on this. So on the area 2D, uh, let's get rid of this ready function. And we also don't want to add a remove on every single frame. But uh, what we could do is uh, click on area 2D and do a body entered for the area 2D. So I'm going to double click this and I'm actually going to connect it to the script on the area 2D. So on area 2D body entered, we'll do something in this script. And let's do a body exited as well on the area 2D. Uh, one advantage of doing it here is that we could later reuse this area 2D asset if you just want a water detection on any other character in your game. Just save this as a separate scene. Actually, let's just do that now. I'll right click on the area 2D. Let's rename it uh, water detection 2D. I'm going to save this with a right click save branch as a scene. Let's put it in physics save. And then it's right there with its uh, GD script as well. Okay, so let's jump into the script now. And when a body enters or leaves, then that means that the count should be updated on the area 2D. So if I click here on the area 2D documentation, we can see here uh, overlapping, get overlapping bodies. We should be able to check how many water tiles are currently overlapping the area 2D. So let's just copy and paste this method here. I'll jump into the script and let's get... A new variable going so overlapping bodies equals get overlapping bodies so the only time i really want to tell the player that it's now in the water is if it's currently out of the water so if in water is false let's just set up a variable up here in water and we'll default that to false this is of course a boolean that the number of overlapping bodies uh, let's see, dot size is greater than one. And really, we could put this in here so that if, if it's already in the water, then we don't even need to check about the size. So this will be another check after we get the overlapping bodies. So if the overlapping bodies dot size is greater than one, then we can say in water equals true and we'll emit the in water signal. Or right, let's see, emit signal and then the name of it, which is in water. And you can pass any parameters that you need, but really we don't need one for this signal. Okay, so if it's out of the water, then we're gonna see if there's any overlapping bodies when a body enters. If the size is one or more, okay, so that should be greater than or equal to one, not just greater than one, then we set in water to true here and we'll emit a signal so that any other nodes that want to do something with that can so here on body exited well we would assume it's already in the water so i'll just check the number of overlapping bodies so we'll do this copy paste and this should be equal to zero so if the number of overlapping bodies is zero after a body exits the area then we are out of the water so in water equals false and then emit signal and actually you know what we really only need one signal here we could just pass this boolean variable to the signal and then when we respond to it we just take the boolean and do something with it so really we only need to connect one signal so I'll change this signal to water state changed and let's copy paste this down here and then we just do the in water variable so in water, change the way I type that with an underscore. Um, yep, got to update that everywhere. So let's just copy paste that in a few times. So now we're going to emit a signal with a Boolean being passed in. And uh, let's put the parameter up here as well. So I'll call this in water. Okay, so now if I click on detection 2D, you can see that there is going to be 
Let me name this is in water, actually. Sorry, I keep changing it. But uh, we want it to make sense. So is in water. It's clearly a type pool. If we click on water detection, we can see the variable here. So now let's connect this to the player script. Okay, and now we come down here. So this will be a Boolean that we get. And for now, I'll just set the local variable up here to whatever we get passed in. So is in water. Okay, I'll be consistent here with the naming. Is in water, lowercase with underscores. So this is going to be equal to... So self dot is in water is equal to is in water, the parameter. Okay, uh, last thing we'll do here, I will print is in water and we'll see how many times this actually triggers so hopefully when the player enters the water even though it's entering a bunch of squares on the grid as you can see here each one of these is going to trigger the on body entered in the area 2d uh, once when it's entering and once when it's leaving but hopefully when we're dealing with the player it'll only receive the message once when it enters any water and it leaves all of the water entirely so let's give this a shot i'll hit play Let's jump in. Let's see how many times. Okay, so for the entering, it worked well. As you can see, it's one initially, but then when you're leaving, it uh, goes ahead and sets to false and then true and then false and then true. Okay, so next let's change the gravity when the player is swimming. Swim gravity float equals, let's say 0 0.25. And when it's not on the floor, We'll check if is in water, then we'll do one thing, or rather, let's do if not in water, then we'll have the normal falling here, else it is in the water. So we're going to change the velocity y plus equals gravity times delta times swim gravity, and I guess I could call this factor or something. Uh, what this is supposed to do is just slow down the gravity so that it... Uh, doesn't accelerate so fast when it's in the water. So we'll start with that. So let's hit play and kind of see how that works right now. So you can see when it's in the water, we're accelerating a lot slower. So we also want to set a cap here for the y velocity that would be much lower than normal falling. So I'll add another variable up here. And at some point, these might become global variables that you could use across multiple characters in the game. But right now, I'm just putting everything in the player script. So I guess I'll say, so I guess I'll call it swim velocity cap. And let's set that to something arbitrary right now. Uh, maybe 200 and we'll see how that goes. So when we're adding the velocity, we want to set a limit. So I'm going to do a clamp F. So we're going to have uh, one value and then we have a min and a max. So the minimum will be the negative swim velocity cap and when it's going upwards you may or may not want a cap for now i'll just put it there alternatively you could make it a infinite value so that it never caps one direction but um just the following direction but now what we've got to do is instead of doing a plus equals we're going to do a s sign we're going to do a equals and we'll do velocity dot y plus everything from this so before we assign everything, we got to do the clamp. And instead of doing a plus equals, we just pull the velocity y over here. So this effectively is what we had before, but now we're clamping it. So let's hit play and uh, jump into the water. And we can see, yeah, we're definitely getting capped in a speed. If I cut this in half to 100 and we hit play, well, now you can see we're moving quite slow through the water. But as soon as we leave the water, we can go much faster. So that's already feeling a lot better. We should also be able to uh, jump if the character is in the water. So let's handle the jump down here. So I'll take this is on floor and let's make this a inner condition. So if is on floor, then we'll do a normal jump. But alternatively, if is in water, then we can do uh, equal to true. Then now we can do a swim jump. So let's do velocity.y equals... Oh, actually, this will be a plus equals because uh, when we're swimming, we don't want to completely negate the falling. Uh, we just want to add a jump impulse to kind of move it more in the swim up direction. So 
let's see. Let's add. Okay, let's make a new berry bob here. Export far swim jump. I guess we can call it. Float equals negative, let's say 100. It definitely shouldn't be as strong as a normal jump. So swim jump plus equals swim jump down here. So if jump is pressed and we're in the water, then we can keep jumping. And this will definitely allow you to do it multiple times. We're not checking if it's on the floor because it's not. We're just inside of water tiles. Let's give it a shot. Uh, so on the ground, obviously, you can jump normally. And now we can uh, actually jump while we're swimming as well. Now, I think maybe the uh, falling velocity is too fast and this jump impulse is not enough. So um, because these are export variables, we can actually change the numbers in the inspector. I'll also change the defaults here as well. So let's change the swim jump negative 200 and the swim velocity cap, let's say 50. So now if you hit play and we go down here, well, we're falling very slowly and we can jump, but not very much because we are capping the going up value as well. So in this case, I think that the up is actually the down. So let's just make this something like minus 10,000, something very crazy. Okay, now we go down here and we can hit space to get a much bigger jump since we're no longer capping it. Uh, but now I think it's actually too strong. So I'm going to change that default to negative 100 again. This is just playing with the numbers and seeing how it goes. Definitely a lot better. Maybe we need to increase that swim velocity cap. Okay, so falling decently and we can hit play. Okay, not bad. Kind of Donkey Kong Country there. Okay, so that's got us a decent start on the swimming. But uh, clearly the character's still just walking through the water. So let's add in a swim animation and make it so that we actually switch to that swim animation when we're in that swim state. So in the animation player, I'm going to add a new animation. I'll just call this swim. I'm going to add the track, property track, sprite 2D, texture, okay, and now we want to change this. I'm going to insert key. I'm going to go get my swim animations from the art. So here I have swim right, put that in there. Now the way I have the animation set up is I'm counting the number of H frames and I'm just changing the frames on the sprite sheet. So the swim has four, so I need to add another track, property track, sprite 2D, H frames, Okay, I'll add a key. This needs to be set to four to split the four frame sprite sheet into four parts. And then lastly, I need to add the frames in. Uh, for right now, I'm gonna turn the animation tree inactive. Let's click on sprite 2D with the animation window open. And we can actually just set up the keyframes down here in the animation window by clicking on the keyframe button. So I'll add in frame zero there and then Frame one keyframe, two keyframe, three keyframe. Change the duration to 0.4 seconds and make sure that looping is enabled. So let's go ahead and test that. Okay, that looks all right. So um, let's go to the animation tree now. So I'm going to add a animation here, swim, and I need to create a path to get to swim. So all these animation transitions are just being controlled inside the code. Uh, but we still need to make the transition between idle and swim and swim and idle. Uh, but I don't think we need to actually have one for Vaughn since it's just going to travel and find the quickest route and all of these are switching immediately. So as long as there's some path to get to swim, it should work. So now let's go into the player script and in physics process where we're checking to make it idle or Vaughn. What I'll do is I'll just check if is in water. If that's the case, then we're going to travel to the swim state. So this is now going to be a else if and an else if. Uh, you can order these however you want, but those will be our three states of the character right now. Let's hit play. Ah, got to turn the animation tree back on. So let's hit active. Okay, so we have our walk. We have idle. Let's jump into the water and we switch to our swim state. And if we leave the water, then we go back to walking. Now I see some errors popping up here. Let's check the animation player and make sure that these animations are set up correctly. So when we hit play, enter the water, and uh, when we come down here, actually, even with the timer turned off, it's only showing that as false once. So I guess when we lower the speed, we don't actually even need the timer. So <laughs> sorry about that. I'm just going to remove it completely from the water detection. Let's get that timer out of there. And we can remove these conditions. 
because uh, apparently that's just overkill. So at this point, uh, we basically have working swimming. So we can jump out of the water we can jump back into it. As soon as we leave the water, you can see that we're in a running state. Uh, of course, we'd probably add a jump to this character uh, for right here, but we're definitely switching the animation states correctly. And if we go down below the water, then we exit correctly as well. And the state change is switching every time we enter or leave. One last thing I'll add for this character is uh, the ability to switch the sprite 2D to be facing the other direction whenever we move left. So I'll get the sprite 2D up here. Equal dollar sign sprite 2D. And with that, if uh, the velocity X is positive, then we'll make it face right. So sprite 2D dot flip H equals uh, false because this character faces right by default else else. Else if velocity dot x is less than zero, then we'll flip it again. So sprite 2D flip H equals true. We don't do it at velocity zero because if the velocity is zero, then we shouldn't be changing directions. It should just stay idling in its current direction. Uh, so just with that, our character should be able to face left and right. And that also applies to the swim. So there you go. Swimming left and right for a side scrolling platformer. And we can jump out into our idle and run states normally. We just need to add a jump animation here, and then you'd have a bunch of states for your platformer. And we can swim through the water. As you can see, as long as we press spacebar every now and then, we're never going to sink all the way to the bottom. And you'd probably have some ground tiles blocking your collision here. But if you so choose, you could just fall off the edge, as you can see there. So I know this video went on for quite a while. I hope it wasn't too confusing to follow. If you did watch it all the way to the end, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. I've been Chris, and I will see all of you in my future video content.